using GIS, we can test hypotheses. And part of our geostatistics class, EASC 4130 or EASC 5130, is that we try to prove or disprove different statements using statistical significance. Now, a lot of the data we brought into Excel or we ran OLS or regression analysis from tabular data, but we're going to look at an example here that integrates geospatial data since we are looking at geospatial statistics. You can see an example here. This is COVID data, COVID rates for June the 14th, 2021. I've mapped these using a quantile classification scheme and you can see where they're high and where they're low. So you can see, and I've placed uh, 10 of the largest cities in North Carolina here and you can start to see in Raleigh-Durham, over in Greensboro, over in Asheville, they seem to be a little bit lower. And I'm gonna make an assumption or test a hypothesis that the COVID rates around the cities are lower than the COVID rates not around the cities or in rural areas. And we're gonna define how rural is. And we're gonna do this using geospatial analysis. I've also run a little bit of data here with the, I'm gonna click on my appearance and symbology, go to my graduated colors. And I've got a couple of other data layers available here where we're gonna look at the COVID rates for January as well. So we can see January, see how they're different in January versus June and see if there's a, some type of difference as well. And so we're going to try to test these hypotheses using our two-tailed t-test. Now two-tailed t-tests are going to be a little bit different than ANOVA. Two-tailed just look at two different sets. So we're going to look at the average of all of the COVID rates for all of these zip codes for one set versus another. With an ANOVA, we're looking to see if there's differences in the means between three or more sets. So I wanna make sure we understand the difference between those. And so in essence, when we run this two-tailed t-test or independent sample t-test, there's a number of different names for it. All we're trying to do is see if there's a difference in one set of COVID values versus another set of COVID values. And we're gonna integrate this using spatial analysis and we're gonna bring this into Excel. And so when I open up the uh, when I open up the attribute table, you can see I've got COVID rates for January, COVID rates for June. I have a unique ID. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new column that says if it's near a city. Now, we're going to run some analysis right here, our select by location to define what near is. And we're just going to make that a yes or a no, and then compare the means that are yeses versus the means that are noes. And so in order to add a column, I can go to my field view, and there's a number of different ways we can do this. And I'm gonna just click here, near city, near city. And we're just gonna make this a text. And we're gonna make this five, because all it's gonna be is just a yes or no. And if I really wanted to get here, and I'm gonna click save. So now when I X out of this here, you should see a column here that says if it's near a city. Now we're gonna run select by location, and we're gonna look for zip codes that are within a distance of our major cities. And you can see that the 10 major cities, eight or 10 major cities here that I've placed throughout North Carolina. And we're gonna look for a search, search distance. Now, what's the definition of near? Well, how about, I'll just say 20 miles. Okay, so I'm just gonna click 20 miles and click apply. And so now you can see the 267 that are near. And then I'm gonna right mouse click. I'm gonna calculate the field. And I'm just gonna put in the word, yes. All right, and then I'm gonna do a switch selection because basically anything that isn't in this set is going to be part of the other set. Right, these are mutually exclusive. It's gotta be one or the other. So I'm gonna click on switch. I'm gonna right mouse click, calculate field, and near city. And so I'm comparing the 496 that are not near a city versus the however many, 267 or so that were near a city. 
Okay. And even if we just want to look at the appearance of it, we can just look at, uh, say, unique values. The COVID rates near city. And so now you can see my yeses versus my noes. I kind of messed up the symbology for this a little bit, the symbology editor. And so now you can see in my two-tailed t-test, I'm going to be looking at the COVID rates for everything in purple versus the COVID rates for everything in green and seeing if they're different, seeing if the space really matters here when we're looking at COVID rates. So I'm going to clear my selection here. And what I'm going to do is export just the table here. There's a couple ways to do it. I might be able to do it from this context menu, or I can right mouse click to my zip code data and go data, export table. Either way is going to be fine. Now, the one thing about exporting these data is that I don't want to export it into a file geo database. I'm just going to export this table that has, has COVID rates for January, COVID rates for June, a unique ID if I need it, and if it's near a city, yes or no. They're these essentially these Boolean values. And But I don't want to save it in a file geo database because I want to access it using something like Excel or I could bring it into SPSS or R or something like this. We're going to be working with Excel. And so I want to make sure I click on this folder here and I'm going to save it in my documents. And I've been working from these demos right here, GIS demos. And then we're going to do T test example and what's the file type that I can store it as and I'm going to save it as .txt and we'll click OK well, let me try this one more time oh I got to click on the folder first I'm sorry there and then I'm going to call it t Test example dot txt. I was getting a little ahead of myself there. Okay, so you can see the output location now. Instead of being a file geo database, it's going to be a folder. Here's the name of the file. It's just going to be a txt. There's a number of different uh, file formats that you can save it in. .xls or .xlsx is proprietary to Excel, so you might have some trouble with importing it. But I like working with CSVs or txts uh, since they're typically software agnostic. So I'm going to click OK. And I can save it here, but I'm just going to remove it here in case we have some file sharing or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up here. I'm going to browse. I'm just going to bring this into Excel. And this is a very, very simple file that we're looking at. We're looking at my uh, GIS tutorials and demos. I want to click all file types. And then here it is. OK, so it's delimited. It's fixed width. OK, this is going to delimit it by commas. And we do have headers. So this is pretty straightforward. Now I've got a shape, and I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'm going to delete this. So all I have is an object ID, and I'll even delete this as well. So you can see what we have. We have the COVID rates. And I imported this in from the GIS, so it brought in some of the geometry and the object IDs that are going to be unique to a GIS. But now I've got the COVID rates for January, code rates for June. I've got a unique idea, and if it's near a city. And so now we're just looking for everything that's in purple, which is going to be a yes, versus everything that's in green, which is in yes, which is a, going to be a no for the, the near city attribute. And while I'm here, I'm going to save it as a .xls. And I do this because if we highlight any of my results, it might add these as, as a new tab or workbook here. And those might not be supported in CSV or .txt files. And so all I'm going to do is go to data. I'm going to sort. OK, so we're going to sort.
So I'm going to sort near city alphabetically. And so now all I'm going to do, everything that's a yes here for June, which signifies if it's close near a city, I'm going to average up all the COVID rates. And then I'm going to average up all the COVID rates for anything that's going to be a no. And so I'm going to click on my data analysis tool. You might need to activate this in the properties or options. And I've got a, a number of different options here. I have a two-tailed test, two sample assuming equal variances, and I'm going to do that. And so you can see my options right here. So my first range is going to be everything here, the COVID rates, until I go down to it starts saying no. So I'm just averaging up everything that's within a certain distance of a city. And then I'm going to start at 269 because we can't have any overlaps. It's going to count and run and count all these numbers as well. And I've got my 763 or so. I'm going to leave everything else the same. And so all I'm doing is averaging everything where the near city was a yes versus the near city that was a no. And I'm going to click OK. All right, this is what it gave me. OK, one of the averages was 870.52. The other average was 870.88. Uh, I didn't plan this, but you can see that the average, the average COVID rates for areas near a city versus outside of a city were almost exactly the same. And then you can see the p-value here. And me, personally, I like working with p-values for your, your two tails. It's about 0 0.98, 0 0.99. This tells us that these are not statistically different. We need to accept, or we're going to accept the null hypothesis in this case, where that variable one, the COVID rates, the average for the COVID rates within a certain distance of a city are equal to the average COVID rates outside of the city, you know, rural areas or whatever we want to call those. Now, I'm going to try it one more time, see if there's a difference, because I know that COVID rates and the dynamics of COVID rates spatially have changed over the course of the pandemic. And so we're, we're looking at these COVID rates here for January to see if they've changed. I'm going to run the exact same thing. So I'm going to run my data analysis, t-test, independent t-test, two sample assuming equal variances. I'm going to click OK here. And to be honest with you, instead of re, uh, reselecting all of these, I'm just going to change the column number to A. So wherever there's an A, wherever there's a B, I'm going to put an A. All right, I'm going to click OK. All right, now let's see the difference here. All right, so within a city, it was 606. Okay, variable one, that's where near city was yes, 263 versus 640. And so within 20 miles of city in January, it was 606. In the rural areas, it was 640. It was much, much higher. Okay, and these are in rates per 10,000. And so it's got variance, number of observations, pooled means, these things I don't really care about. And what I really uh, focus on with students is don't I don't worry too much about the math but how to interpret the results this is what I care about right here this detail I don't care I, my assumption is that one isn't more than than the other rural is higher I just assume that one is going to be more than the other. That's why I utilize the two-tail t-test to give us a little bit more flexibility there. And you can see here, this p-value is 0 0.09. And so with 90% confidence, I can say that the means from areas within a city, COVID rates close to the city are significantly different, and in this case, significantly less than COVID rates outside of the city back in January of 2021. So that's what this number says, okay, 0 0.09. The lower this number is, the more significant these differences. And you can see here, I do have a significant difference. I can say with 90% confidence or P is equal to 90% 90, 90 or at the 0.1 confidence level. It's not 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, but 0 0.1 is 
is fairly good enough for me to say that these numbers are significantly different. And so in conclusion here, we can see we integrated, and this is what we call a loosely coupled application, but we integrated these data, we integrated these uh, data, brought them into Excel, and we're able to integrate geospatial analysis. We're looking at real world distances by calculating new columns and looking at a t-test of uh, two means or independent t-test of two samples to see if the COVID rates were different. In one case, they weren't different. They were literally the same. The other case, they were statistically different with 90% confidence. And hopefully, looking at the, the, the p-values, you can see those differences as we did this in Excel.